Hi, this is Laurent Thomas for another uh, tutorial about um, PG plugins and their application. So in this case, I want to show you how to use the annotation generated with the qualitative annotation plugin to train an image classifier using deep learning in Nine. So basically, I have adapted an existing workflow that was available from the NIME team, so from Christian Dietz on the NIME hub, which um, allows to fine tune an existing deep learning network that was trained to recognize cars and stuff like this, and then fine tune it to train it on your own custom classification problem. So the purpose is basically to have then a model that takes an image and says this uh, image belongs to this class or this class. So this workflow is doing binary classification, meaning that there are only two output classes. And in this case, I'm illustrating it on some biological problem, um, actually some um, image of kidney, which I can show you quickly here. So these are the image and basically we want to recognize two morphology, which is this normal morphology, let's say, and then an impaired morphology, which is more like this, somewhat elongated. All right, but let's start from the beginning. So this workflow, uh, it's pretty big, as you can see, but it's doing all the process from uh, data pre-processing so that it's kind of compatible with what the workflow is expecting, then training the workflow um, on, on the training set and evaluating its performance on a test set of images, of course. And finally, you can export the model, the trained model, so then you can do prediction on new images uh, using your H5 file, H5 file. And you can, of course, also visualize the performance on the test set to see how many images were correctly classified. Okay, so for this workflow, you also uh, need a Python installation together with NIME. And I didn't mention, but you can download this uh, workflow from uh, GitHub. So from the uh, repository of the project. Uh, I'm currently offline. Let's put it back. And um, yeah, so the link of the repository is in the, in the paper. So um, regarding the Python installation, um, so you can go to file preference, then type here Python. And so there are two um, ways I advise using Anaconda. And uh, so you can let Python, uh, let Nime actually create uh, the uh, environment for you automatically with the right dependencies. So you can just create a new environment and Nime will take care of installing the, everything with the right dependencies. If you want to do it manually, just make sure you uh, respect those um, package version, especially the TensorFlow version should not be higher than 1.12. So yeah, internally it's using um, Python and the package Keras, but we won't go much deeper in those details. Everything otherwise go via the interface of the node, of the NIME node. The starting point is to load actually your uh, data set. So one of the annotation table. In this case, um, I'm using an annotation table as generated by the single class uh, classifier because every image is only allowed to belong to a single category. So, um, and uh, the table should be formatted to have a single category column. So you recognize uh, the column header uh, image actually now is called file name it's not a big difference. So uh, you see my uh, directory, uh, the file name and the category. So we have two categories, normal and impaired. Okay, so this file, I'm loading it into the first node here. And we can look at the output, which is exactly the same that in the Excel file, right? Then we can just count how many um, occurrence on the, of every categories we have. So we currently have 400 image for impaired, 800 for normal, because actually the impaired term type is not as common as the normal. I would rather advise normally to have a kind of balanced data set. So as many impaired as normal, um, because now the network might better learn the normal category than the impaired, but let's see. Also here I've 
quite a lot of image you can decrease this amount to 100 image should be sufficient even maybe 50 images depending on the cases okay then i do some uh, quick pre-processing um, basically the categories are turned to integers uh, for the the model that's what they expect um, then i load the image uh, do some pre-processing so downscaling the image uh, in the range of size that the model expects also normalizing the intensity between 0 and 1 and turning the grayscale image to rgb stack so basically just duplicating the the grayscale uh, image to a three channel so we can actually look at um, what the network is taking as input so you can see that it has three channel and if i'm, I'm overing the mouse here um, the values or uh, float values okay also i didn't mention the data set um, actually i use a slightly different one uh, one is available a similar one is available via zenodo i will put the uh, link in description of the video okay so the, the the data set is ready the ground truth annotated data set is ready and uh, then we split it in three fraction one which is used to train the model which is a training fraction which is about 50 percent of the data set then a small fraction which is validation fraction which is used to check the progress of the training of the model during the training and finally a test fraction so once the uh, training is done to to test on new images how it's performing so we can see the distribution so how many image are in those different fraction there we go so the row id here the zero and one correspond to the two categories which has be, have been turned to uh, integer for the model and so you see for the training uh, fraction for the category 0 we have 210 image 480 for uh, category 2 validation we have a much smaller fraction and then a test set of 128 and 244 okay then um, we load uh, the model so you can uh, using control and double click you can go into this meta node and you can see a bit uh, the network architecture so basically we're loading a pre-trained base network the vgg16 network for images cl image classification and adding on top a uh, custom layer for the classification including um, like adapted to the number of classes we expect so we don't train uh, this base uh, network it's frozen we just that's why we, yeah it's, it's, it's from here we just train the classification layer that we append on top here all right so once this model is uh, loaded uh, it's it's given to the network learner which is responsible for the training and you can change the parameter of the training in the configure window so basically the, the important uh, parameter are the epochs so how many iteration of training you want to do so what in epoch is one passage of the full training set through the network and uh, you can also change the learning rates uh, and normalization uh, parameter if you are familiar to these parameters otherwise i would advise to leave them okay so in this case i already run training once and um, i will rerun it with you quickly but first of all i want to show you that uh, we can actually visualize um, progress of the network over time during the training so this is the um, loss function over time in red for the training set and in blue for the validation uh, fraction for the five epochs that we have run here which took just 10 minutes and uh, you can see the error for the training data and for the validation data which is indeed decreasing slightly increasing towards the, the end but um, I would say it's it, it's uh, sufficient it's uh, correct um, values rather close to zero all right once it's trained then uh, the accuracy is checked on the uh, test fraction so that's what we do here uh, so as you can see it's taking here the test fraction and um, and then you can see the image the initial category and the prediction um, well yeah then it's for I format it so that it's a bit easier for you and then you can um, directly visualize it as a confusion matrix actually 
this as an interactive more uh, a nicer view yes there we go so uh, in this confusion matrix you can see the actual category of the image and the prediction so in this case uh, actually the accuracy was 100 percent so all the impaired were classified as impaired all the normal were classified as normal uh, which is pretty good and um, let me see in this one if there's anything to show you yeah then you can also see here um, so on, on on this side the category and the prediction and if you click on the image you have a preview of the image finally the model can be exported to um, a directory of your choice and you can give it any name and this actually saves two files one uh, h5 file which is which contains the train model and a text file uh, which contains the class names which is actually important to um, for the prediction because again the prediction by the model uh, is just an integer initially all right i finish here for this first part of the video i will just make a break and um, continue uh, with the prediction uh, on, on unseen data Well, just before I do the prediction, let me uh, replay the uh, training with you. So, if you run this node, you can also check the command line uh, output. So you can see that here the uh, graphic card is detected. And then you can also inspect the learning monitor like I did before. And then you can see in real time the progress of the network. So I usually display the loss, which is more... Um, accurate I would say and so in red we have the, vali the values for the training data and once it passed one iteration we can see the values for the validation data so now we're just doing five epochs um, this number you need to um, adapt depending on how the network is doing if the error is, is too large you might want to increase it or if the error is increasing again for the validation set then you should uh, maybe decrease it to avoid overfitting so there we go now it finished the um, the training and as you can see the error decreased for the validation set and count the stabilized okay that was it all right as a complement to the first uh, part of the video just want to show you now the prediction workflow so how to predict the classes for new images that were not part of your training set so you can simply load uh, the image to classify in an image reader, like any image in, in NIME. And uh, so here, of course, there's no information about categories, just the image, uh, which should be a single grayscale image. Then uh, it goes through the same uh, pre-processing than the training workflow, so intensity normalization, downscaling, and conversion to RGB. Then we load uh, the model. Uh, the h file file that was um, saved after the training and the corresponding uh, text file with the classes which is important to make the mapping between the integer output and the class names and then you can uh, simply execute this node there is no parameter actually to change here and you can directly then see your uh, image with your the category next to it so this is indeed normal this is also uh, normal and you can save then this as a table so just the image paths uh, and the categories as a csv so the image of course are not saved in csv and that's about it so there is a similar workflow for multiple categories so if you have um, more than two possible output categories um we'll because here it was only um, two possible output categories uh, with this binary classification. Uh, so the, the multi-class uh, workflow is very similar. It just changes a bit the, the, the structure of the model, um, the network architecture of the model, but otherwise it works pretty much the same. And I think with the documentation online, you should be able to handle it. Thank you for watching until the end and bye-bye.